All right, once again, welcome every one of you to another edition of the class. We are looking at a simplification of algebraic fraction today. And um, we are going to look at how we simplify algebraic fraction. Thereafter, we'll proceed to addition and subtraction of fractions, multiplication and division of fractions. Then we'll look at fractions equals to zero and undefined fraction. And I hope that this should take us about two to three episodes uh, classes to finish uh, this topic. So it's not a long one. You have the basic ideas, okay? The necessary uh, prerequisite to this topic is what you have learned before, like factorization. So I'm not going to be going over that again. So I will really just show you some steps and tips, and of course, you're able to do the rest by yourself. Okay, so I want to talk about simplification of algebraic fraction. It entails solving and reducing that fraction to the lowest and simplest form in which it cannot be solved further, okay? So there are different between something not being solved for that and something uh, put in another form. For instance, if somebody have minus uh, two x minus three, okay, this is the final answer. Cannot go further, but it's possible to still express this answer in a different form. You're not solving it. You only you only put in another form. Okay, I can factorize minus and have it as minus into two x plus three. They are the same thing. You're not solving it further. Okay, these two are the same thing. All right, so, it so this is different from when you have, uh, uh, let's say, 20, 24x, okay? You have 24x plus, let's say, 8 all over uh, 3. These two are different. This one you can solve for that because you can factorize uh, 3 out from the numerator and divide by 3 down. So leaving your final answer in this way, we attract some subtraction of max because you did not finish up to the lowest uh, form. Okay, but, but for these other two, they are already in their lowest form because you can't solve for that. These and these are the same thing, but uh, in different appearance, okay. So, and um, uh, under simplification, of course, we're going to make use of uh, factorization, expansion, and what have you in simplifying. So just making use of the basic skills you have learned in uh, mathematics to solve problems. All right, so let's look at this example one. It says simplify uh, this one now. You have this down here. Okay, so we have, uh, so let's look at what we do there. We have to simplify uh, this fraction. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, the first thing, the first thing, if you look at, if you examine this fraction now, all right, you will discover that there is nothing common between the numerator and the denominator on first examination. There is nothing common between the numerator and the denominator. So what do you do? Remember, the approach you use under simplification uh, depends on your skills, okay, in mathematics, all right? So the first thing we do here is we actually uh, expand the numerator because when we look at the denominator, um, it contains linear, uh, linear factors, x plus 1, x plus 3, x minus 5. And when you look at the numerator, there's x minus 5 here. But on the other part of the numerator, there's no x minus 5. So you cannot factorize x minus 5 out. Likewise, if you look at this part, the right-hand part or the other part of the numerator, uh, the numerator it contains x plus 3. Here contains x plus 1. Could I say, let me cancel x plus If you do uh, x plus 3, cancel x plus 3. Uh, well, you're, you're on your own. You're deceiving yourself. That is wrong because um, you are dealing with fractions. And for you to cancel out, you must bring out a representative to cancel out. All right? It's just like we are in a class now, OK? Uh, all of you now um, have about 22 students present now in, in this class. And you guys want to talk to me. Definitely all of you will not just begin to speak at the same time. Because if you all speak at the same time, then I will not hear anybody. It will just be it will be noise, it will be rowdy, OK? but uh, you may decide to select somebody as a spokesperson, the class captain who can speak. Maybe can, Sonia can speak on your behalf and she will not communicate with me. Okay, so you, you factor at Sonia, all right? So Sonia being a factor is representing the entire class. Now, Sonia now interacts what with me, okay? So that is the same principle that is applicable in mathematics. So when you are dividing, so there's an interaction between numerator and denominator. So in a single term, interact with a single term, 
then expression in that expression. So you cannot be having a, a expression canceling a single term. You have uh, two x plus eight all over uh, forty-eight. And I say two go here four, you know, two go here twenty-four. You are wrong because your denominator contains a um, a single term. Why your numerator is a, is a, an expression? So it is this expression is like the teacher with the student up here. So anyone can be up, anyone can be down. Teacher can be up, teacher can be down. But the thing that since the dance is a term, it does not comply with the principle of interaction. Okay, so you need to bring factorize your numerator out so that you cannot interact. You bring out somebody a term that will not interact with a single term 48, and you cannot be able to cancel that. So this is strong. I do not want to see this in any classroom. So just know the basic principle that in mathematics, it is term interact with a term, expression interact with expression. Which is in line with, this, with the principle of communication in human communication. All right, so let's look at this solution together now. All right, so now we have this, uh, you have gotten the basic explanation. So, what I'm going to do here is I will expand the numerator because there is nothing common yet. Okay, I will not expand the numerator. All right, so expand the numerator. So, x times x will give us x squared. So we're going to have x squared minus 5x. I'm expanding the numerator. Then minus 3 times x will give us minus 3x. And using minus 3 again, minus 3x times 3 will give us what? Minus 9. All right. Then all divided by the linear factor, which is x plus 1, uh, x plus 3 and x minus 5. OK? So the next thing, you simplify. And that will give us, if you simplify the numerator further, what do you have? You're going to have uh, x squared minus 8x minus 5x minus 3x will give us minus 8x. Then minus 9, all divided by the linear factors which are x plus 1, okay, x plus 3, and x minus 5. I hope this is clear enough. Priya, are you with us? Is Priya here? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, so what we do next, the next thing that's done, now we have expanded, the next thing we do, we now see whether we can factorize this quadratic expression up. Because this, the denominator is has already in the, in the factored form. So we now factorize the quadratic expression up to see whether it is factorizable. If it's not factorizable, then we are done. Then if it's factorizable, then perhaps we might be able to see a linear factor that may be common with the denominator we can factor out. So what are the factors we use? Give it to me. So remember that uh, when we factorize, when we want to factorize this, let me just quickly explain that. I won't do that again, but it, it just to remind, refresh your memory, you have x squared, okay, factorizing quadratic expression minus 8x minus 9. All right, so the coefficient of x squared is 1. So you remember, I carry the coefficient and multiply the last term, and you have minus 9. All right, so you now find the factors of minus 9. Now, after getting minus 9 now, the next thing, the factors of 9, that when you add it, you are going to have minus 8, okay? And it's going to give you uh, minus 9 and 1. You use minus 9 and plus 1, because minus 9 times 1 will give you minus 9, and minus 9 plus 1 will give you minus 8. So these are the two factors you will now use to replace the middle term here. Of, all right, so that's what you normally do. So... That's a reminder. Okay, so we now have s square. Okay, instead of minus eight, now we're going to have um, we're going to have s square. Then instead of that minus eight, we're now replace it to plus one x, which is set as plus x. Then this line will become minus nine x. Okay, then minus nine, all divided by the linear factors that are the denominator, which are x plus 1, uh, x plus 3, and x minus 5. OK. So and of course, when you factorize further, the numerator 
by grouping, you simply group. Okay, remember your factorization by group, by grouping, you group these ones, these two, and of course you group the other two. Okay, so apply factorization by grouping. When you apply factorization by grouping, what do you have? All right, so I'm going to have x into uh, x plus 1. When you factorize this one, then minus, you bring that 9 is common, 9 into x plus 1 also. Okay, all over your linear factors, which is x plus 1 x plus 3 and x minus 5. Okay. All right. So um, then the next thing you do, what you do, of course, you finish up. See, this one is common with this one. You take it in one bracket, x plus 1 bracket x minus 9. All right, so this is our complete factorization of quadratic expression. Then all over x plus 1, bracket x plus 3, okay, x minus 5. All right, so this is what we have now. All right, so you cannot see that we can, we are not ready to do our division, okay, because there exists in factor. Now, so this expression, this particular expression, all right, this expression, we cancel another expression, okay? We cancel a similar expression. So this expression here, we cancel this expression here because x plus one, if you see that interaction I talked about, that expression interact with expression and factors interact with factors. I mean, uh, times interact with times, all right? So x plus one, we interact with x plus one because that is a consistent um, or a level of principle of communication. So they are interacting, the numerator and the denominator are actually interacting, all right? So when you do that, you are now left with uh, x minus nine, all divided by x plus three, bracket uh, x minus five, and nothing can go again. And of course, this is where the mass ends and the answer. Any question? Any question? For your second question, this is number two. Now, this is a multiple fraction. Okay, this is a multiple fraction. So you can either simplify your, your this thing, your, your first fraction below. Okay, you can first of all simplify the fraction below, then of course you combine it with the one up. All right, so you can separate your fractions. You can decompose your fractions so that it will not confuse you. Okay, if you have multiple fractions that have been, uh, uh, that have been given to you. And of course, also know that in simplifying addition and subtraction of algebraic fraction, that if the denominator are the same, then it is easier to solve. Okay, when denominators are the same, then you have uh, the fraction much more easier. For instance, when I give you five all over, Three minus uh, this is a twelve x all over three. We will not have problem with this one. We're going to be very fast, okay? Because denominators are the same. You just simply say all over three, and you have five minus twelve x because you have a common denominator, right? Okay. So, but if the denominators are different, then of course you have to be finding the uh, the LCD, the uh, lowest or least common denominator, what we popularly call the LCM, okay? So you are going to be looking for that. And it's more uh, difficult or to solve than when it is, they are the same. So you can also try to unify your denominator when you are solving problem, okay? So that's another way to make things faster for you. So looking at this example now, I have um, A, everything over one plus uh, one, one all over A plus one. All right. Now I'm going to decompose it. Okay, so I'm going to have it as equals to this a is the same a divided. 
All right, this long division here, it is divided, then divided by what? You can see that these two are under the long division, okay? This particular one under the long division. So, so I put them in a bracket. I put both of them in a bracket. Then one plus uh, one all over a plus one. Okay. Now, what is inside this bracket? You will discover that I can unify since the denominator here is a plus one. I can make this. I can multiply this whole number by a plus one over a plus one, because uh, a plus one all over a plus one is in as one. Two of us. Two of us. All right. So we know that. Okay. So now I can do that. I can now make this one a plus one over a plus one, so that. It will be easier to add. So that is the, one of these um, uh, techniques we are going to be using, I'm recommending for you, which you are going to see more as we go along in this class. So A divided by, I'm uh, going to have it as A plus one, all over A plus one, okay? Then plus one all over A plus one. So my left hand one has been converted to a plus one over a plus one and the reason is to unify the denominator so that it will be easier to quickly uh, add together so you now have it as a divided by and of course it's just simply a plus one okay then your numerator a plus one which is this numerator then plus this other one here Okay. Any question? So you have A divided by A plus two all over A plus one, where you add your numerator. And you can finish up now. You become a division become multiplication times you invite your right hand fraction a plus one all over a plus two. And of course, you can see that nothing can cancel out. It means that we have actually come to the end as we now just multiply out as a square plus a all over a plus two. That will be your final answer. So that brings us to the final answer, which is this. Any question? Any question? Sir? Yes? Sir, is that a square plus a over a plus two? Yes, it is. The last final answer, yeah. All right, I'm seeing a question here. So how do we make the one on the left, a plus one over a plus one? Okay, how do we convert this one to a plus one over a plus one? It's just simple mathematical induction. The reason why we did that is so that it will be easier for us to add because I just is, I explained that it's easier adding fractions with the same denominator than fraction with different denominators. Now, let me look at number one in your classwork and you'll do the rest for me. Let me look at your number one. All right, so when you look at this um, number one here, it just um, simply is a multiple fraction also. I'm going to have one all over x plus, one over x plus one all over y. Okay, I separated the, the fractions, then divided by Okay, one all over x minus one all over y. Okay, so what do you have here? The LCM is x plus xy now. Is that also? The LCM is xy, or you can multiply, since they are different, you can multiply, you can multiply this particular side by xy over x, by y over s and all that, but you don't need that for now. So the same is xy. 
x going to xy, x will cancel x, remember y, so y times y will give us y, plus y go here, y cancel y, remember x, x times y will give us x, okay, then divide it by here, we have xy also, then the same thing, x cancel x, remember y, y times y, we have y, minus y going to here, y will cancel y, remember x, and x times y will give us x, so this is what we have. Of course, you divide uh, y plus x all over xy, multiply, division change to multiplication, you invert your right-hand fraction as xy all over y minus x. And of course, you can see a single term. This is a single term now, okay? A single term xy will cancel another single term xy. All right, so we're now left with our final answer, which is what? Y plus X all over Y minus X. So this is our final answer. Okay, any question? All right, so no question. All right, so this will bring us to uh, the end of this episode, uh, we will come back. We are going to be doing your classwork, okay? So I'm going to give you 10 minutes maximum. That is 10 minutes is for both correction and everything for you to solve and maybe receive your answer and do correction for you. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to do a classwork. Then I'll proceed to the next subtopic in our next episode.